Hey everybody, it's Jim here, and today we're going to be talking about one of the new pedals from Universal Audio, the Ruby. I have a lot to say about this pedal and a lot of things that I would like you to hear and know going into it if you decide to go this route for your Vox style tones. However, I filmed a lot. Not sure how long this is going to end up being. I'm going to timestamp it. So if there's anything that you're particularly interested in, feel free to use those as your guide through this endeavor that we're about to go on together. Now, normally you're told to save the best for last, but in the instance of this specific pedal, the Ruby, I'm going to start with what I feel is the strongest selling point of this pedal, and that is using it plugged directly into an interface for recording right into the DAW of your choice. I picked out a few sounds that I really liked with the Telecaster. I feel like they're a really good match together. Let's hear what those sound like.
Now in that specific application, there is nothing that this pedal leaves you wanting. It absolutely nails the tone and the variety that you can get with it is just, it's incredible. This thing knocks it out of the ballpark at that specific kind of task. Next, what I wanted to do is I wanted to hook it up using the four cable method through two different amps. We use the Mesa Boogie, which is a tube amplifier, and we also used the Soldano Mini Head. I thought it would be interesting to use the Soldano Mini Head because there is no clean channel on that. And when you use the four cable method with this or any of the other universal audio pedals and some other brands as well like victory it adds that whole other channel to it so if you have a high gain little head you want to add in some cleans or something totally different this bypasses all of that completely so let's hear what those sound like <laughs>
Now, on both of these applications, I was very pleased with the results. However, there was one thing to keep in mind here if you're taking score at home. I had no cab emulation involved whatsoever, and I'm going to hit on why I'm making a point of that in a little bit. But sounded absolutely great, especially in the case of the Soldano. You got to think here, man. That thing is a little gain monster. Almost no clean tones that are usable on it at volume. This thing takes that totally out of the equation. So if you engage this or with the Dream or the Tweed, whatever one you wanted, you could really add in whatever you want. And that's a low cost or a nice little backup application. If something fails at a rig, you're still going to be able to finish out playing. And that's a great selling point to me. And you're also going to be getting excellent tone on top of that. And as somebody who traditionally plays tube amps, I have to say I love the simple layout and the lack of intricate controls, if that makes any sense. Sometimes I feel like when you have too many things that you can alter and change and dial in manually via computer desktop application, it can become a little bit too much. I like something that sounds good without a whole lot of effort in a very familiar format to me. The only thing that you can really find yourself messing with that I found myself messing with was which speaker am I going to use? And all of them sound really good, but the silver was the best to my ears. And thus far to the video, you might be thinking that I'm not going to say anything negative whatsoever about it because in the applications that we've just seen and heard, I think it does a fantastic job. But it's the little things that are going to prevent this from being a solution for more players and kind of fall into a niche market. To begin with here, just a general thing, the normal channel, I don't really love it whatsoever. Once you go over to the Brilliant channel, it just screams Vox. You get so much more of that classic jangle to it. It is just amazing. And the Vibrato channel, forget it. I, I, I can't say enough good things about that. Another thing is, you might not be used to this because it's not something that typically happens with just the way that these potentiometers are made on pedals and on amplifiers. When you have your treble setting right here, traditionally, if you turn it clockwise, you're going to be dialing in more treble. No, that's not the case. The same thing applies for the cut right here. The more clockwise you turn it, you're actually rolling off treble. So it's something you get used to and it doesn't actually infect the uh, functionality of it, but it's something that you should know going into it. Now, one thing a lot of the competitors of this pedal has that this one does not, if you can see as I rotate this, there's no headphone jack. For me, I don't think that that's a total deal breaker, and I kind of understand why it's not there. However, it would have been a nice touch. Now onto the parts of this pedal that just annoy me. The first being, you do have your two separate inputs and outputs for this. However, when you're in the UAFX, which is the only way that you can alter anything, you're nowhere on the pedal where you can change from the four cable mode to the regular mode. When you're in there, there's no way to have it route out one signal that has a cab simulation on it and one that's just straight out dry. So in the scenario that we were talking about here, using it with the Saldano mini amp or something like that, if you were gonna be miking up that 
that cabinet, you're not going to have any issues. However, if you wanted to send it front of house from this and take advantage of these amazing, amazing speakers that are built into this, then you are going to need a third product involved here, a DI box, because this signal that comes out of this pedal is unbalanced. You're going to need something that's going to translate it to balance, then go to the front of house. So something decent in that range is at least going to be a hundred bucks. And it's just something you have to consider when you're making this decision. And one more thing about the UAFX, that's only a phone or iOS app. You can't plug this in via the USB that's provided. This is a USB-C. This is a very high quality connection. This is capable of doing this and connect to your computer to make any changes that you would want to do anyways. It has to be done via Bluetooth. Why? Why would you do that? You have the hardware in to be able to control it from the computer. Just implement it. And the last thing I'm going to say about this USB connection is you can't use this as a standalone interface, meaning despite the fact that this has no headphone jack, if you were to plug this into your computer and like every other USB-C interface that's available out there, like even the focus right that I use, the 18i8, you could monitor through the headphone jack of your laptop or your desktop, whatever it is, and have this just go straight in and not need anything else to get to recording straight into your DAW with these pedals. You can't do that, and I just don't understand the decision process here. And the last little annoyance that I found with this pedal is not going to apply to everybody, and it didn't really even apply to me, but I could see where some people would say, oh, come on, guys, for $400, you can't even give me a power supply. If you have a good one at home or you use something like the DC7, the Chios that I use, no problems, anything like that. But if you don't and you bought this and you didn't read the entire description expecting to have one included with it, well, you're going to be ordering another one. You're not going to be able to use this thing straight away. And I realized I was just highly critical in a few aspects of this pedal and the design of it, but the pros of it outweigh all of them to me. If you are somebody who just wants to use this direct into your computer as a solution to record an incredibly realistic Vox sound, you can't beat this. You cannot beat this. And I've seen the argument of, oh, you could just buy a used AC-15 or an AC-30, won't be that much more money. All right, let's play that game. Say you spend the four or $500 on one of those. You got all the mics? Do you have the room to mic it up correctly in? Do you have the right converters? Do you have the right preamps? Do you have the right interface to do all of that? Do you have the know-how to do it? And most importantly, can you do it at any hour of the day or night and not bother anybody else or worry about, you know, tubes or such like that giving out on you. You can't. This cannot be beaten in that aspect. Sure, there are advantages to having the real amp, and I'm a huge proponent of having real amps, but for what I believe this is truly designed for, I don't think that that's a con whatsoever, and I don't think that's an apples to apples comparison or complaint. But the bottom line of this pedal is this. There is no other option on the market that will nail these tones as well as this box will. And that is the ultimate selling point. The HX Stomp is going to offer you more. It's going to offer you more routing capabilities. It's going to give you MIDI. It's going to give you all these other things and a way that you can control it via USB to the computer so that you can alter anything that you want and have all the fun in the world as well as use any IRs you so chose. Although with this, really, you could just disable all the speaker cabinets that are on it. There's an option to do that as well and then run whatever IR you wanted that way if that really bothered you but I don't see the point in doing that I actually really like the speakers again that come as emulations on this unit this thing really is in a class of its own but it's really expensive for what it is this is for somebody who is really recording this is not a do-it-all solution this is not a one-size-fits-all for every single kind of player and at $400 it's not reasonable for a lot of people. It's not the best practice tool because of the reasons I listed, the lack of the headphone output, the lack of the connectivity to use headphones easily. You're going to need some other gear and an external power supply to get this thing up and going. But I think that Universal Audio, when they made this, they assumed that the target market would have those things and that none of these would be a problem.
But for me and my personal usage point, this is as good as it gets, and I think it's worth the $400 given the other reasons that I've listed, especially when considering that you can do this at any hour of the day or the night. Some of the other competition out there is the Strymon Iridium and the Walrus Audio. I think both of those are really good too, but they don't nail the Vox Tone in the way that this one does. However, you're not going to be able to affordably get three different amp simulations from UAD for anywhere near the price that you could get for either of those two other pedals. It would be triple the price, actually, in most cases, because they're $400 a pop, and I don't see these going that much lower on the used market if they come up for sale available. But if you're somebody who's very picky, if you're somebody who likes the simplicity of the knobs, who wants something that is going to go right into their interface and provide an amazing amazing sound to record with. This is this is as good as it gets. It just nails it. I can't say it enough. But if you're somebody who wants a little bit more functionality, a little bit more options, a little bit more tweakability, maybe you should consider looking elsewhere. But for me, I love it. So if you could do me a favor, if you made it this far into the video, I would really appreciate it. If the least you can do is leave a like on this video. Leave me a comment. Let me know what you thought about this. Subscribe if you haven't already. I look forward to seeing what you guys have to say and what your thoughts are on this whole new line of Universal Audio pedals. I'm not sure if we're going to be getting out of any other ones because I'm happy with the Fender style tones I have, but who knows what the future holds. Until tomorrow, hope you have a great rest of your day.